Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. Typically, I interview fitness and movement professionals on their story and how they create transformation in their clients' bodies, but also in their lives. But ever since a global pandemic, we have shifted the conversation to support you talking about how do you manage during this uncertain time? How can you manage your fear and anxiety during an unprecedented conversation of a global pandemic? I've brought on some of the top in experts in their field, talking about mindfulness, talking about COVID misinformation, and talking about how can you find happiness when there is so much overwhelm right now. Well, today we are starting a new series looking at the question, how do we want to feel coming out of COVID? How do you want to shift your perception in this time and start doing the practices, those routines that can amplify where we are? What I'm finding is that so many people are overwhelmed. And so I want to talk about shifting that overwhelm so that we can come from a place of maybe abundance, come from a place of maybe a little bit more happiness so that you can feel like you are doing the things to move yourself forward. And so today I'm going to share with you the conversation that I had inside our Project You program that just started this week. I hope you'll enjoy this conversation as much as I did. All right, guys. So I'm going to be going through three factors that you need to consider when you're taking on your health and fitness goals. And these are the three, I guess, core foundations of all my programs that I run online, all my one-on-one training that I do with my clients inside the structure of accountability uh, coaching. And it is the foundation of this program. And so I wanted to share this with you so that you can kind of get a grasp of the elements that we're going to dive into. Because I believe that without one of these things, you can't get a full picture and you cannot find a sustainable way to move forward regardless of what your health and fitness goals are. And in fact, I think that these are foundational things that you can apply to not just your body project goals, but looking at you know, your life goals, whatever, whether, whether that is in work, in your relationships, um, in nutrition, in fitness, I think these three components, even though I frame it through the lens of fitness are really fundamental to look at. So the three components include the first, your project goals and the celebration of goal attainment. The second is the progress and consistent practices that I often talk about, whether it's on my podcast, whether it's in my program, right? And the third is you, project you, who you are and what are your desires for your project, whether it's weight loss, fitness, or your life. So let's get into the first one, the project goals and celebration, right? This is where the results are of your goals, right? This is where those goals lies and how you can quantify and qualify what you've been doing through this process of body project goals, of weight loss goals, of life goals. This is where you see and reap the rewards of the practices and the benefits that occur through all the small details we implement day after day right? This is that big goal, that big vision that I mentioned before. Um, And if you want to hear more about vision, I think it was in January, I did a podcast and I will include it actually in this program um, where I spoke about creating a fitness vision, right? And so this is the seeing your goals come to fruition. For example, that you will have you know, a nourished body, that you will be following a macro plan, that you will be moving your body daily, um, that you will feel fit and strong, that you will feel like mindfulness is a thing that you have adopted, 
right? These goals and the celebration around attaining those goals are useful, right? These are the things that set our vision, where we want to go and what we want to accomplish, right? We always need to set out with a goal in mind. And we've spoken about it within the group, but you want it to be a measurable goal that's attainable that you can actually track like we went through about creating a goal for ourselves, right? I wanted to kind of touch on this because yes, it's important to have a goal, but why this is one of three components is because there is a downside to over-focusing on goals and those celebration, right? Because you're attaching achievement of your goal as the outcome to your happiness, to the accomplishment, instead of looking at the whole picture of understanding the tools, of executing the practice, and learning those powerful habits we often talk about that catapult these results, right? Your goals are also this ever-evolving Kaizen approach. I've spoken about it a lot on my podcast about how I love the belief structure of Kaizen. Kaizen is rooted in the Japanese word of continuous improvement. And in fact, I named my son Peyton, his middle name is Kai, because of this root word of Kaizen, right? Continuous improvement, the act of ever evolving, ever advancing your desires and goals. This doesn't negate the celebration of accomplishment, right? But this is just the goal. And so let's touch on celebrations for a second. I really believe that we need to celebrate those micro successes, that we need to celebrate the baby steps we put in place, right? Because it's this acknowledgement that fosters contentment and the pause of reaching a said point, right? That moment of saying, you know what? I was never really good at hydrating before. I would never show up for myself in a way of self-compassion of honoring myself through a workout. I would always throw myself under the bus through nutrition because I would emotionally eat my way through motions of feeling upset, overwhelmed, angry, pissed off, whatever it is, right? Or that you keep self-sabotaging and putting yourself off and saying, I'll start the diet tomorrow, right? Never honoring yourself from that place right? And so I believe that we need to celebrate those baby steps, those accomplishments, because once that you can put that, you know, evidence on your backpack, on that train of your life to say, yes, I can, right? And celebrate that, that I think that just reinforces the goals and then allows you to set a new target from a place of new focus, right? So let's move into number two, the consistent practice and progress, right? This is the layer of progress and process, not perfection. These are the practices that are powerful throughout your project, whatever that project is. But then hereafter, it shapes our habits and the systems essentially that automate that kind of Kaizen approach, that continuous improvement. Consistent practice and Kaizen is about the baby step action that adds up to the outcome of goals goals, and leads to those micro celebrations, right? These are the things like, I will move my body every day this week right? Or I will do a mindfulness meditation to become more present. I will be drinking 10 cups of water today so that I can hydrate my body and honor my body and what it needs, right? These are the practices that we put in place day in and day out, right? Your practices and progress are akin to the strategies and tactics that we put in place in businesses. You know, I've mentioned it before inside my programs, but I think of great brands or great leaders that have a moonshot goal, like Tesla, for example, like Elon Musk. It wasn't a moonshot, it was a Mars shot, right? That he had this goal of getting to Mars, right? And the practices and systems and protocol he put in place were quite robust, right? That is the training to get to the marathon day. That is the foundation of which 
that Mars shot was able to get attained, right? And this is where I believe much of the magic lies, that mundane monotony of practice, but that mundane magic of these little things, those baby steps, that day after day is the momentum, right? I always talk about where does motivation and momentum come from? It is this, it is the practice, it is the progress that we get little baby steps through that builds that momentum, that weaves it, its way into motiv motivation, right? And we will speak more about motivation in a second. But I believe that this is it. This is the motivation, the underpinning of what catapults you to success, right? Listen to it again. These is these little baby steps, this mundane day-to-day -day action of practice is what builds to micro successes. That is the momentum that weaves into the motivation as the underpinning of which catapults your success from, right? And in all my programs, I put in these practices around movement, around mindset, around mindfulness, around nourishing your body as the foundational, foundational mundane practices as the strategy that creates the success, right? And what I really want you to hear is that what you practice becomes the projection of which your goals and outcomes are birthed through. Write it down, listen to it again. Your practices become the projection of which your goals and outcomes are birthed through, right? That is the 10 months of pregnancy to get the baby, right? And although this is an ever evolving and growing foundation of practices, right? And really finding what works for you, this is the construct of which goals are attained by, okay? So let's get into the third fundamental value that I use in my programs. And you can kind of see how it is this hierarchy. Yes, we have the moonshot, the goal, the Mars shot for Elon Musk, and you have all the practice and systems and um, everyday actions that need to happen through your team, through your daily practices, through honoring that one step in front of the other baby step system, right? Now we're going to look at the greatest project you will ever work on yourself right? And if you, <laughs> my brain is going a million miles a minute on so many different aspects, but let's look at Elon Musk for a moment. The goal is the Mars shot. The systems are the things and processes he does day in and day out, right? But what underpins that all? He has a mission to teach every single person in the world that what you think is not possible is actually possible. That is his passion project. That is his mission to show anybody and everybody that anything is possible. That if you have this dream for yourself, for your life, for your business, for whatever it is for him, this big Mars shot goal, that if you put those things in place, the practices day in and day out, rooted by that mission, right? To get to the Mars shot, right? It is this hierarchy of drive. That is the driving force. So let's look at what are your desires? Let's frame in the context of your body project, right? Project you. What are your desires? Those desires, those, that underpinning of your internal beliefs of who you are at the core, your innermost identity, your highest, greatest version, right? I mean, if you've listened to my podcast before or if you've done a program with me before, you'll know that I often talk about, this is about using fitness and movement as the access point to your greatest self, 
right? The biggest challenge of taking on fitness and nutrition and or weight loss journey is when we place too large a focus on where we are going, those goals, and how we are getting there, those practices. Yes, they are very important in doing and eliciting, eliciting the results. However, without considering the foundation of which you're building your house upon right? You're missing the brains of that operation, the blueprint and the driving force of why you were doing this, right? You know, I know I ask everyone in the beginning of our program, like what, what is the driving force and how important is it to you? Because sometimes we adopt other people's goals, dreams, visions, because they sound great, right? But does it actually land for you? Is that what is important to you? right? And does it matter to you enough to say, yes, that is my desire, my deep desire for my highest version, right? Because when you land on your greatest self, honoring your body as your temple, honoring your, your life as the sacred vehicle of your life, then that is where motivation lies, right? That is what cultivates those daily practices. And so I know we spoke about this in the beginning of the program, but I want to remind you that, you know, you motivation, everyone's like, what is the motivation? I've lost motivation. I've fallen off the bandwagon, right? Like I've pre been preaching about for almost two years on this podcast and preaching for over almost a decade in the programs that I've run online or in person. This is how we look at motivation. We look at the mindset, at the mindfulness, at being present to our personal constructs of how we see ourselves, of what we think about ourselves, our core beliefs and associated behaviors around that. By taking a look at your best version, your highest self, your greatest version and vision of yourself, asking yourself, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be coming out of this program? How do I want to feel coming out of this time? How do I want to be in my life hereafter with the tools that I'm gaining with that goal and vision in mind? Becomes a journey of honoring yourself from a place of self-love, honoring what is important to you, being present to your greatness of self-worth, and then aligning everything in accordance to honoring this. And from that, you will be able to blossom and bloom from a powerful place rather than searching or seeking for, for external motivation or looking and searching for that elusive willpower that I often talk about on my podcast, looking for what, right? Oftentimes people look for that better workout, that better diet plan, that better macro count, or that number on that scale that we put so much weight or self-worth on to define us. When you start honoring your body as your temple and holding that sacred for who you want to be, when you honor yourself through nourishing your body in health and love, when you start honoring yourself through daily movement, showing up for yourself with self-compassion, putting boundaries around, creating sacred time for yourself that you need to create balance, to re-energize yourself, to give back to yourself so that you can give back to others, right? When you show up in service of yourself so you can be of service to others, that is honoring yourself, right? A powerful place of self-love and care, creating those boundaries, and then teaching others how to honor you. This is kind of that inner knowing that we often shut out, right? When you are busy working, going, going, especially in places of uncertainty or overwhelm, right? This is listening, becoming aware again, like I've spoken about to that inner guidance and intuition that sometimes we negate, right? We go through and we'll go through more of these kind of grounding statements of I'm the type of person who loves myself by showing up for a workout, right? I'm the type of person who has compassion, self-compassion to fuel my body well, right? I'm the top type of person who nourishes my body with high vibration foods that make me feel good. I'm the type of person who can practice balance every single day, right? Reminding yourself through these statements, kind of like affirmations to remind yourself 
of that higher version of who you are and those deep desires that you so want, right? This is the empowering, the self-worth worth part of Project You, of the greatest project you can ever work on yourself, honoring who you are with the discipline of fitness as a practice to guide all aspects of your life. I believe that your body is your temple. If you've listened to my podcast before, if you've been a client of mine, if you've seen anything I really post anywhere on social media, I believe that your body is your temple and honoring the sacredness of your unique grace, greatness is your responsibility. But let's talk about for a moment when we fall off the bandwagon, the elusive bandwagon, right? Let's look at when people and this is kind of like how I want you to honor yourself, that unique greatness of you, that limited edition of you, kind of Elon Musk with the Tesla, with that Mars shot, right? That there is this grand goal, yes. Your highest version is your greatest gift, your greatest version. Yes, it is sometimes daunting. That Mars shot for Elon Musk, That Tesla limited edition, whatever kind of version, Model X, whatever it is, is a big goal, right? And sometimes it feels daunting, right? And what happens when you fall off the bandwagon? I've spoken about this many times before on this podcast, and we will speak about it throughout this program and our time together. But what happens when we get derailed, when life inevitably shows up in face of all our efforts, right? And all the things that we put in place, right? When the scale doesn't budge, when we feel like we can't do this anymore. Oftentimes our fitness vision and practices get derailed, right? Oftentimes that negative Nancy or that chirping ego or that judgmental self shows up as self-talk, you know, as limiting beliefs, as self-sabotage telling you you can't do it or you're going to start tomorrow, or screw it, right? This is that screw it mentality that, you know, you had that one cookie that all of a sudden you've made a decision, you killed all of it, and you decided that, well, I had one cookie, so screw it. I'm just going to eat five more, and maybe I'll start tomorrow, maybe, right? Or that moment when you say, damn it, I missed a workout this morning because I woke up later, my kids were busy, or you know, my boss called me at the office, and now you say, screw it, I'm not going to even do a workout, right? And that momentum or loss of momentum actually derails you for not just today's workout, but tomorrow and the next day, and then the rest of the week, and then maybe a month, right? Or that's the shoot, I really wanted to spend an hour and kind of plan for my meals or work on my daily planner to create what my day and my intention is for the day, but my friend really needed to talk and I felt bad, right? Because you weren't able to create boundaries around yourself. Falling off the bandwagon or that self-sabotage that leads to a kind of spiral thinking of self-loathing, self-deprecating thoughts, detrimental feelings of failure, right? I actually spoke about this probably over a year ago on the podcast with Peter Twist. Peter Twist was a 10-year strength and conditioning coach, one of the top ones in the NHL that was um, hired by the Vancouver Canucks. He works with top athletes, uh, athletes and athletic teams out of China, out of across the globe, right? And he spoke about failure. We spoke about learning to fail forward. Think about that for a moment, failing forward. Think about the Elon Musks of the world, the Googles of the world, these big corporations that play big, right? And fail big, like multi-million dollars, multi-billion dollar failures, right? These are the athletes that put their neck on the, the line. These are the people that put their lives on the line to potentially fail, right? This is us taking on our fitness like our lives, taking on our health because our lives depend on it. Our health is our wealth. We now know because of COVID-19 that people that didn't take on their health, right, with a higher BMI are compromised. Their immune systems are compromised. Their respiratory VO2 max ability to fight against a respiratory illness is compromised, right? We now know that these things are important. And so failing 
is one of the things, but failing forward is looking at how can a person get up from the hiccups and use this as a reset, like we speak about in my programs, learning the lesson and looking at the formula of what has maybe been the evidence that we've had success in before, all the practices that we've put in place, and remembering, remembering the vision, remembering the passion, the mission, that driving force, like the Elon Musk story of creating possibility where you think that it is impossible, that golden passion that is the driving force right? That these practices allow us to choose again, right? And I always say this, that the difference between myself or a top athlete or an Elon Musk and those people that are just started starting out on their journey is that we have built the muscle in the practice. And that's why I think that fitness and exercise is such a beautiful metaphor for the practice, right? Because it is that discipline that builds the practice of focus and resiliency, right? That practice of like that annoying bicep curl day in and day out doing the workout is actually the practice of building the strength not only in the physical muscle, but the resiliency of being able to fail for, get back up, shortening that time gap between the failure and then getting back on the elusive bandwagon, right? So choosing again. You know, Gabby Bernstein speaks about this in her book, Super Attractor, and she has actually coined it the choose again method, right? And so I think this kind of frames it person perfectly right? It's kind of that age old practice practice of saying to yourself, when you get that negative Nancy downer judgment, poo, poo, poo on yourself, that self-sabotage or limiting beliefs that we'll talk about more in this program of saying, thank you for sharing, right? Like I'm, I, I'm on this mission track. Thank you for sharing to your ego. You know, Eckhart Tolle also speaks about this, like, thanks for sharing but remembering your visit vision and not allowing that to derail you for more than a moment, right? Yes, you can acknowledge it, but not letting that derail you. So Gabby speaks about the choose again method as a way to stop that spiraling of negative thoughts. It literally becomes an interruption of the rabbit holing of getting into those negative thoughts and then allowing you to choose again, choosing a more positive and powerful, empowering thought sequence, right? Reminding yourself kind of like those statements I spoke about with the affirmation, I am the type of person who right? As you invite back those positive thoughts, that verbiage, that affirmation that I'm actually the type of person who is able to get back on the horse, that is able to fail forward, right? That moment to moment choosing again is that momentum, is that motivation, is that a reminder that you can shape shift, shape shift back on track, So she shares three steps that I wanted to share with you to look at. Step one, notice your thoughts, kind of that awareness, that gap that I was telling you guys about the other day, that she says that anytime you're stuck in this negativity, stop for a moment, become aware, right? Like what is that, right? That trigger, that failure, whatever it is, that notice like, huh, there it is again, right? Almost from this place of curiosity right? And then notice from that pause, what is your reaction? And Gabby believes that you should ask yourself, how am I feeling right now, right? And actually to take the act of writing it down because it reinforces that acknowledgement of noticing, right? Like, okay. Then Gabby speaks about the second step, forgive the thought. She believes that forgiveness is the release of resistance that you have in your life. Listen to it again. Forgiveness is a constant releasing of resistance that you have in your life, right? Now, I know we spoke about this inside our program the other day, and I speak about this often inside our, with my coaching, with my programs. You need to forgive yourself, right? 
You're not bad for eating that cookie. There's no room for that self-loathing because you missed a workout, right? You are releasing that resistance that you have, right? And getting rid of that perfection mentality or that shame around what you think you should be doing. Stop shitting all over yourself. Stop shitting all over yourself, right? She believes that not forgiving yourself keeps you stuck. And in fact, it does, right? That this choose again allows you to forgive yourself and allow, say it's okay that you got derailed or distracted. This is life, guys, right? It is the ebb and flow. When you look at people like Elon Musk, and I want you to start treating your life, your projects as that Mars shot, right? Because it is exactly that. So Gabby believes that you should say thank you to your self, right? Your, those feelings and thoughts of showing you and revealing to you what you desire, right? And forgiving yourself for falling off track. Then the third step, she says, simply choose again, right? Answering the question of what is the best feeling thought I can find right now. Then it, taking action, right? Taking action is a choice. And like I said before, it is the practice of getting back on, choosing again, getting back on track, right? And you know, the final piece is really that falling off is part of the process and is progress, right? It is the practice of strengthening that mindset muscle, of reclaiming your self-worth by getting back on track, of building that resiliency that in face of challenge, in face of failure, in face of derailment, you can get back on. Everyone, including myself, some of the top athletes in the world, Elon Musk's of the world, have fallen off track. It is just that they practice getting back on faster, choosing again quicker, and embracing those little blips that occur as part of the progress, as part of the process, and the magical journey of the project, which is you. I hope this is insightful in framing where you want to go, I hope this is helpful in understanding the purpose of talking about your fitness vision, talking about that underpinning purpose, that driving factor, that fitness vision statement that you can now use as the driving force of the catapult which drives that momentum and motivation of those daily practices that gets you to that goal. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will send you a challenge to follow up this conversation. All right, so there you have it. That was from inside our Project U uh, conversation for week one, where we are going to look at transforming, transmuting the way that people are looking at themselves during this time, asking the question, how do I want to feel going into summer? How do I want to feel in my life from a place of our highest, best version? I appreciate you tuning in week after week. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you are watching or listening to this. It is important that I get my message out into the world, that you can live your best version, that your health is your wealth, your body is your temple. And fundamentally, if you put these practices in place, that you will live your best version too. I appreciate you for tuning in. We will see you later this week as we continue this conversation. Bye for now.